Sandro Diamante, the ball on a string and... Oh, Diamante! Welcome back to All Out West for another special off-the-pitch interview for episode two of season three. Who have we got on today, Kelsey? Well, with 95 A-League appearances under his belt for uh, Melbourne City, now joining the boys in green and black, we've got Ben Garuccio. How sick is that? He's an experienced left back, so I'm really excited to see what he brings to the team. Now, Ben, how you going, mate? Yeah, good, good. Um, excited to, to be a part of the Western United family now. So um, just, you know, sort of gone into our third week of preseason. So it's been um, really enjoyable so far, to be honest. It's been hard, but um, it's been nice to meet the lads and, and, you know, join in with the team. Wicked, how's the travel? What's that from, as, from as, where I live? Yeah, a lot of travel or? No, 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 no. I'm in Essendon. I'm based in Essendon, so... I'm oh, about 20 minutes away, so it's, um, yeah, it's really, really good. Wicked. Now, we're going to start off with a hard one, okay? And this isn't on the sheet. Where are you at on the Palmer versus Palmer? Palmy versus Palmer situation. This is important. Um, so, I always said Palmy. I'm from Adelaide. Oh, okay. So, forgive me for that. I'm from Adelaide originally. So, in Adelaide, everyone says Palmy. It's undoubted. But to be fair, since I'm, now that I live in, I've lived in Melbourne for so long, I just say myself embarrassment. I just say Palmer when I go when I'm in a pub or something like that. I just say yeah, chicken Palmer. Thanks. I, I completely. It's, it's a hard one to judge. It's like what unit of, unit of beer they sell at different venues. Is it a midi? Is it a sc- you just don't know. Um, yeah. 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 So okay, we'll get into the serious stuff now. Basically, for the fans, what's your football story? Um, so as I said, I'm from Adelaide. Um, I grew up in Adelaide, um, went through the, the system. I played for the state teams and things like that. And then I went into the um, South Australian Sports Institute there before I went to the AIS uh, when I was 15. I spent two years there and then I signed for Melbourne Heart. That was the first team. That was actually John Aloisi was the coach. Um, so he was the, the coach that gave me my first ever opportunity um, at a professional level. And um, I spent about four or five years there and then it obviously turned into Melbourne City um, before going back to Adelaide. Uh, I felt at that time in my career I just needed to play games. Um, I really wanted to go somewhere so I went back home um, and that ended up being a really good move. I spent two years there and I I thoroughly enjoyed that and I was lucky enough to go over to Scotland with Harder Midlothian. Um, I spent another two and a half years there um and it was a really really good experience absolutely loved it and obviously I always wanted to play in Europe so that was just you know a massive achievement in my career to to tick that off um I mean yeah I came back here last year um and sort of my football focus now has shifted um shifted from you know wanting to to play in Europe so so badly to now you know I'm really looking for a place to call to call home um, and I'm hoping that can be with Western United. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I've I've signed a two-year deal, and um, you know, the, the club knows my intentions. That that you know, if if everything's going well, I'd, I'd really be keen to stay. So um, I'm loving my time so far. I'm just looking forward to the season getting started. To be honest. Nice. Well, I think that really feeds well into our next question: Is what attracted you to signing with Western United? Yeah, I think it's it's a new club. It's a young club. Um, but, you know, a club that's also very ambitious. And uh, that's what I liked, to be honest. Um, I was actually really close to coming to the club before signing for City last season. Um, but just for whatever reason, it just didn't work out at that time. Um, and there was no bad blood between between both parties. It was just, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out at that time. Um, and then, you know, when, when I made my intentions clear that I wanted to leave City in the off-season, you know, they were... They were super interested straight away. And then, you know, when, when John got the job, he gave me a call and explained his um, side of things. And I was really excited by, by what everyone sort of said to me at the club. And to be honest, it was a really, really straightforward decision. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an easy decision for me. I'm just, to be honest, I'm buzzing to be here. And, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to getting started. Well, I'm actually going to jump a bit here because actually that leads in well to one of the other questions, which was, so upon you signing, um, John was very complimentary about you and you were complimentary about him. Did you have much of an in-depth conversation prior to joining or was it just a quick chat? Yeah, it wasn't too much of a, of a long conversation. It was just, you know, from his side of things, um, what he was looking to do. Um, and then obviously from just from my side, I just said, you know, what, what I want to achieve and, you know, 
for me, obviously, last season we won the um, we won the league with City. Um, that was something I've never ever experienced in my career. You know, I've been playing since I was 17 years old, and I've never ever won, you know, silverware. So for me, winning that, you know, that's made me hungry. Now I do want to win more. Um, I think, you know, I know that the club does everything that they possibly can to put to put together a good squad and a squad that can challenge for things like that. So for me, that's always a big thing. You know, you you want to be going to a club that's doing everything that they can to be successful. And I think Western United does that. So, um, you know, the, the club will give us the, the best opportunity to be to be the best we can. And then it's up to the, you know, the players and the, and the football staff to, to do their part on the pitch. Yeah. Well, that again leads on to our next one. Very good segues here, mate. You made our job easy today. Um, <laughs> so speaking of Melbourne City, won the silverware last year. How long did you celebrate for? Is there like a cutoff time? Like, did your missus go, hey, mate, that's, that's enough there, mate. It's been two months. Yeah, to be honest, my missus was actually really good, to be honest. There, there were um, quite a few nights that I was rolling in <laughs> and she was rolling out of bed. So um, <laughs> I was I was just getting home and she was getting up for work. So um, <laughs> she could have been a lot harder on me, but no, nah, it, um, it was good. It was really enjoyable. Um, it's, you know, as I said, I've been playing since I was 17 years old, never won anything. So at that point in time, I thought I better enjoy this because you don't know when the next one's going to come again. And honestly, it's true. You speak to anyone, you know, people win things and then they think, all right, next year we'll win again or the year after we'll win again. And it doesn't always happen. You know, it could be the first, it could be the last. So I think you do need to enjoy those moments uh, when you can. I think I celebrated for a good week just to answer the question. Um, <laughs> and then after that, it was, you know, far out. Better get myself back in some not bad shape before I get a beer belly. <laughs> so um, then I got back doing some runs and things like that, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was good. I'm glad you took the time to enjoy yourself. You got to enjoy those things because yeah, like yeah. you said, you never know when, how how often you're going to win or when that time's going to come. Yeah, exactly so, um, right. Now that you're at the club, who are you most excited to be working with? Um, obviously. You know, there's the coaching staff. Um, you know, I've worked under them before. Um, I know that they've they've matured a lot since I worked with them when I was at Melbourne Heart. You know, since then, obviously, um, you know, Hayden Fox, he's had a few other jobs and same with John Aloisi. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to see to see what they bring, uh, to see the, you know, the style of football that they want to play. And, you know, we've seen that a little bit already in training and it's uh, really exciting. You know, training has been really enjoyable. So, um, there's that and then there's obviously you know some of the players that we've got you know I've said this to nearly everyone um, I've spoken to so far like Diamante is obviously on another level you know you see yeah. him you play against him um, and you see his quality but when you train with someone you see it even more because um, you see it on a day-to-day -day basis and you know you don't just see them on the weekend but you actually see far out this guy does this day in day out <laughs> So it's no fluke as to why he does some of the things that he does on the pitch because you see it in training, you know, nearly every day. So, um, yeah, that's that's a good one. You know, I'm an Italian Italian heritage. So for me, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So what do you think you can bring to the team? No, for me, um, you know, I think that anyone can expect just a lot of energy. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite a fit. I've got not bad engines, so... Um, I play left back um, usually. I can play higher up as well, but I've been accustomed to left back um, in recent years. And I'm just someone that, you know, being an attacker when I was younger, I love to get forward. I love to help out, you know, further up the pitch and, and try and get a few assists and things like that. So, you know, that's that's what you can expect from me. I think, you know, everyone, all you can really ask from a player is that they give 100% every time they put on the shirt. Um, I think, you know, that is unquestionable for me. Um, that's something you always get from me, that every time I put on that shirt, I'll give 110%, I'll fight to the last minute. And um, I think, you know, if you play if you play like that, then um, you'll always be respected. Yep, completely agree. Speaking of the shirt, do you have a preferred number for the next season or have you been assigned your number yet? Yeah, I think I'll be wearing... I'll, I think I'm wearing 17. Quote me if I'm wrong, but... um. I think I'm wearing 17. I love, to be honest, I love 19. That's something I, that's something I wore. That was my first ever number. Um, I stuck with that my whole career up until I went to Hearts. I was 17. Then I came back last year, was 19 again. And now I thought, 
well, Rizzo's 19, so I'm not getting that anytime soon. So <laughs> 17 it is. Um, so that was free. So I thought, you know, go back to 17. Um, there, you know, I'm one of those people. I like to stick with with what I know. So um, seven was available. I thought I don't do enough step overs to be taking the seven dog. Fair enough. <laughs> so in the lead up to the new season, what are you working on the most? Is there any area that you're working on, like fitness or technique or? Yeah, for me, it's not so much working on. I think I just, I really want to have just a nice, consistent preseason. That's something I haven't had, you know, when I was a couple of years ago um, at Hearts, I, I did my ACL. So that made me miss the next preseason. Um, and then there was a whole COVID drama. And then last year, I came, you know, halfway through the preseason with Melbourne City. So I was always sort of playing catch up in that sense so um sorry about that it's just my phone no, um stress. so i think for me like being here from day one that was something i was really keen uh keen on when i was speaking with the club you know i said i want to get there and i want to be involved from day one um just to you know give myself that that longevity of the preseason, uh to give myself the best chance to to build up my body and make sure you know i don't get injured um throughout the season so I think if I can just have a really good preseason, that will set me in um, in good stead for the season, and hopefully I can I can kick on and, and have a successful season with the club. We all hope so too. Fingers um, crossed, man. Yeah, really hope it's so. Um, so prior to your announcement, like that you'd sign, the club had a cowboy theme up on social media. Do you know what that was about? I think it was. Um, what's this phone? I never get this many messages. Um, <laughs> I think it was um, – I just put on silent now. I tried to do that last time. I, I think it was, what, like, Welcome to the Wild West. Is that – So there's no, like, story behind it or anything? You just – Nah. No, nah, no. Nah. Thought... Not that I know. Not that I know. I maybe need to speak to Lucy. <laughs> not like a um, secret, crazy, like, Toy Story Woody fan or something? Nah, nah. Not that I know of. No, nah, maybe – I don't know. Maybe she's pulled something from somewhere. Maybe she's just stitching me up. Yeah. But – um. I'm not sure. No, I just thought it was Welcome to the West, which was obviously, that was pretty self-explanatory, wasn't it? I was really hoping it was a Wild Wild West Will Smith reference, but I was I was a bit let down there. But good to have your board, nah. sir. All right. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, so here's a bit of a random one. So you spent some time in Scotland, obviously. Are you a fan of Urnbrew, the, the classic soda from there? Or like yeah. Cabernet beverage? The I am brew. I am yeah. brew, as the Scottish would say. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's actually nice, to be honest. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's an orange drink, but it doesn't taste like Fanta. Mm. That's probably we're the best both, thing we both got Scottish family. family. I've been to Scotland and had, had Urn Brew as well. And, yeah, it's weird. It's just this weird orange drink, but it's delicious. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. It was – Um, I didn't have, like, a whole lot of it. When I first got to the club, um, the Scottish lads were like – whenever we went for coffee, they were like, oh, like, Try this, try this. And then after a while, I was like, all right, I'm going to get one myself now. So, um, no, nah, it is it is nice. I definitely – I recommend that. You can get it here. I, I've actually seen it here. It's at Coles. I've seen, sure. it somewhere. I've seen it at Coles yeah. or something in the international section. Mm. So, yes. It's not in vending machines, though, like everywhere in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So what do you do outside – the pitch are you a person who's just like non-stop football or do you have outside interests that grab your attention away from football um yeah i i love my coffee um so that's something that keeps me pretty occupied to be honest if it's not um you know going around to cafes and things like that i've um got my own coffee machine machine here at home um that i've spent a fair bit of money on that setup so um, yeah, I've got a decent little machine here, and to be honest, honest that's something I want to do after football. Um, get into get into coffee and hopefully open a cafe. So um, that's a big passion of mine. So you know, probably yeah. most days after training, I'll I'll um, swing past whether it's with the boys from the team or just friends or my girlfriend or whatever, and you know, try out different cafes and things like that. That's something I enjoy doing outside of football. Um, aside from that, I'm, I'm a bit boring, to be honest. That's, um, that's about it for me. That's okay. Let's do another one. Great segue, sir. Uh, FIFA or PES? Like, do you have a preference? In... Yeah, understood. Yeah. And uh, following on from that, 
Are you happy with your 65 stat, overall stat from FIFA 21? You know what? You say FIFA or Pez, I actually haven't played either in like oh, the really? last couple of years. I used to be like, I used to be freakish. <laughs> I feel like I could have got into the e-games scene. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It was just like one year. I think it was like, because I started playing Ultimate Team so much and, you know, spend money and <laughs> try and get the players and things like that and, you know, message the guys, can I get my card? Can I get this? And then it was like year on year, it's like, then your team just disappears and you have to start again. I know that's the beauty of it, but I was just like, man, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep putting this money into this game. I'm going to go broke. Basically, basically, the only update every year is the cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Gameplay is like more or less the same. They add a few things in and then, yeah, you know, you got to start all over again. I thought, you know what? I, I need to be getting a mortgage or something, not put my <laughs> Good point, Mr. <laughs> So we'll get to like a bit of like like pre-game things like that. Is there a playlist or a song you have on heavy rotation prior to games? Um, I, there's a few just to be honest, like SoundCloud mixes that I listen to. Um, there's I got loads to be honest from like you know Melbourne um, Melbourne DJs and just you know DJs all over the world. To be honest, like I like my. Um, I like a bit of everything, to be honest. I like, like a bit of hip hop. I like, a, obviously, on game day, I like a bit of dance, um, house sort of music and things like that. So, um, yeah, on game day, it's more so like that upbeat sort of stuff. Um, mm. But just yeah, sort of, you know, whatever gets me going that day, I'll listen to. On that note of game day, do you have a pre-game, pre-game ritual? Um, not like a crazy one, like some players. I know some players that just got like everything down to a T. Um, I'm not really that superstitious, to be honest. Um, it's more so like there's about as interesting as it gets for me is I have pasta the night before every time. So I could say that's a bit of a ritual. That's my energy. Um, and then just like on game day, I just like going for a walk, to be honest, like a walk with the dog, um, go get a coffee. Um, and that's it really. But to be honest, like, you know, if it's raining outside and I don't go, like it's not going to kill me. I'm not, I'm not that superstitious, but um, that's like my, my usual routine. And then, you know, obviously it's different when you play away and things like that, then you're in a hotel. So it's a little bit harder to do those things, but um, yeah, I'm not really that superstitious. So I'm all good. I'm pretty chilled. Fair enough. Out of curiosity, and this is completely off the cuff, what kind of um, dog do you have? So I'm a bit of a dog lover. So, Kind of curious. Yeah, I'm a dog lover as well. I'm a dog lover as well. We've um we've got an English pointer. Oh. So um she's only six months old at the moment. She's actually a bit of a terror. The topic there. Just one last question. Is there anything you want to see from us, like the fans, over the next season, or and there's, or is there a message you want to pass on to us? Yeah, obviously the message would just be you know um that I'm from my side of side of things. I'm so you know happy to be here. Uh, I'm so excited to to be part of this club, and you know I hope that um, everyone can see from me how excited I am when I when I go onto the field and play, um, that I play with passion. And you know, the other thing would be that you know just to whenever you can, just support support the team as much as you possibly can. I know, I know that's you know what you guys already do, um, but you know it, you can't explain how much it actually helps. You know, seeing those faces in the crowd, um, especially when we're winning and when we're doing well, just seeing those crowd numbers go up and that feeling of, you know, these people really are behind us. It does make all the difference. And, you know, City um, don't get the biggest crowds, but as the season went on, you know, the, the crowds did grow and the players feel that. Like, there's no doubting that, you know, playing at home, having those crowds behind you. And, you know, we're so lucky here in Australia that we actually can have that right now because, you know, the Premier League now, they're only just getting their fans back. They did the whole season with no crowds. So it's such a privilege for us. And, you know, we feel it so much. And that's what football is all about. It's about having fans there, um, getting to the game and, and supporting your team. And, you know, it is really just one big family because, you know, we want to win and you guys want to see us win. And, you know, when we do that all together at the end, to stand there with a trophy in front of you guys is is just the best feeling. And that's, that's what football is all about. So... Um, that's all I can really say from my side. Wicked. We'd like to say thank you for joining us today and uh, we can't wait to see you throughout the season. 
We'll probably be inactive at some point this season, so come past. Uh, we'll probably <laughs> Happy be days, I'll, I'll come past. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, guys. Cheers. Kelsey, how fun was that? He is such a lovely guy and genuine. Yeah, that's. I, I had a really good time. Just This is what the point of these interviews are for, is just to talk a bit of stuff, learn about the player that a lot of people wouldn't know. See the, the, the thing behind them. Like, he wants to open a coffee shop post-football, which... He loves coffee. That's a really big thing of him. We find out that he had, he got into like FIFA Ultimate Team too much a few years. You know what I mean? Like those. Yeah, yeah exactly. Getting to know who they are as the person. What kind I of mean, pets they have? What kind of yeah. pets? The fact that they know that uh, buying every beef every year is the same as having Malibu Stacey with a brand new hat. <laughs> Simpsons. Can we do a pod without a Simpsons reference? No. no we can't. We've been all out west. Thanks for your time today. All west, aren't we? All west, aren't we? Mm-hmm.